way for today's National Puerto Rican Day Parade. A sea of red, white, and blue taking over Fifth Avenue this very hour. New York City is home to some one million Puerto Ricans, the highest population outside of the island. And we're so excited to talk about the issues that are important to this vibrant community. Commissioner Lorraine Cortez Vasquez is with us on the Sunday. She runs the city's Department of Aging, and she's really working hard to make sure seniors from all walks of life have affordable housing and the services they need. We also talk with the vice chair of today's big parade about the grand marshals and proceeds from today's event goes to scholarships. And later, a first look at this head-turning fashion exhibit here in the city. It showcases Latinx style and culture. All that and so much more happening right now on In Focus. Well, let's begin today's program with Department for the Aging Commissioner Lorraine Cortez Vasquez. Welcome to In Focus. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to be here. I'm so you. glad you're here. Thank you, know. you. And we're celebrating Puerto Rico culture today. And, you know, the Puerto Rican community skews older. Mm -hmm. That big influx of young people that we saw back in the 40s and 50s, those numbers are not as big anymore. Am I right? Well, the numbers are not as big in New York. In New York City. Right, right, New York City. Right, they continue right. to be big in the, right. in the states, but right. they're now in Florida. Correct. And other parts of the state. We have about a good 700,000 older adults over the age of 65 mm -hmm. of Puerto Rico, uh, who are Puerto Rican. Um, and, you know, for us, it's helping them retain their culture, continue to age with dignity and grace as they expect it to. And our job is to make sure that they do. That's right. And that's your job. And I got to tell you, you know, I'm here every night at 10 o'clock and we feature you sometimes. You're having a good old time in your job as aging commissioner, aren't I you? I really <laughs> am. You know, we got you playing pickleball with the mayor. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> what was that like? That was that was good. Good. Now, let me tell you something. He can't, he held his own, but so did his older partners, including me. <laughs> right. Held the, held their own. What I can say is that few people know that when I first got out of college, mm. I started at the Department for the Aging. I didn't know that. I know. Oh. Most people don't. And so it's just a labor of love that I'm back here at the end of my career, just having a You've great time. You've come full circle, Commissioner. Yeah, I sure have. Tell us about the Silver Core. Oh, Silver, you know, as, as a person who's returning and not deciding deciding not to retire, many people choose to continue working. Mm -hmm. And they want to work for a variety of reasons. Mm -hmm. But one is because they still want to enjoy sure. work. They want to contribute. Sure. Another is because of uh, economic means. We want people to stay in the city. And so what we've done is we've come up with a program for city retirees. And so you're a city retiree. You can come back into city service. Doesn't have to be in the job that you had before. You can now try and something that you have not done before, you get up to $38,000 wow. with no impact on your pension. Very nice. So it's very, very nice. You can work part-time, and we're very excited about that program. We have about, uh, I think it's 16 agencies who are already enrolled, and we have 100 people placed, and we see the interest growing more and more every day. You know, older adults bring great assets Absolutely. to the workforce. They bring a focus and an mm -hmm. attention, and they don't have distractions. Right. And so they can really contribute a lot. And what's most important is their productivity contributes to and influences others. Yes. And so you get the best product possible. Best of both worlds. The best of both worlds. Tell us about the Cabinet for Older Adults. Let me tell you, when I read about this, I was like, this is impressive. It is impressive. No, and really. I want to tell you that it's the first in the country. I know it is. And so, that, that is just, I hope it spreads like wildfire all over this country. Well, that's one of the goals of the mayor and one of our goals. Mm -hmm. we're, we're talking to mayors across the city about it. But here is what the mayor did. You know, we had a five-year community care plan, which was the whole goal was aging in place. Mm -hmm. So the mayor said, well, if we want to have people aging in place, how do we make our city agencies responsive to make that possible? 
because he knew that there was many more agencies besides the Department for the Aging who touched the lives of older adults. So he created this cabinet, visionary. He took age-friendly city to now making it an age-inclusive city. 20 city agencies working together on goals and also identifying gaps, but accelerating programs. One of the ones I want to share with you today is Department of Transportation. Yes. Here, the Department of Transportation did an excellent pedestrian study, and they were finding out because so many people were being killed right. by vehicles in New York City. And then they found alarmingly that about 52% of those were older adults. Right. And so then they took the pedestrian study and now made it an older adult pedestrian study, went mm -hmm. even a step further. What we've done is identified about 100 communities that have a high number of older adults and have put traffic calming devices. What does that mean to the layman? Right. It means those boulders, it sure. means bumpers, sure. things to just calm vehicles down. Sometimes they extend the sidewalk so that the car can um, uh, move away, make a turn without hitting the older adult. And then we delayed traffic signs. That is an incredible improvement. Pedestrian safety for older adults means pedestrian safety for all. That's right. For the mother with the carriage, for the person with disability. So it is just a forward-thinking approach. And then the other one we have, which is one of the other ones that I love, and, and then you can ask me more questions, <laughs> but the other one that I love is the one that we're doing with the Board of Education. Right. We have 18 schools. We are testing and piloting an anti-ageism curriculum. I when do it. you learn the most? You learn the most in a school environment. That's right. If we want to combat ageism, who to do it with but the young people who are the ones that need more information so that they don't perpetuate this discrimination as they go older. That's and right. And so they respect their grandparents and abuelos and tios and know that. Absolutely. Right. That, Absolutely. that this is not where, some which, curse. Which is what you do in your home. That's so right. We want you to be able to do that outside of your exactly home. Exactly right. Listen, I'm so glad you popped by. Enjoy the parade today. I know I my Boricua sister's going to be out uh, there waving. This Boricua <laughs> girl will have her flag. As a matter of fact, I got to run over there. Yes, 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 yes. So, All right. Thanks for coming in, Commissioner. My pleasure. Truly appreciate your time. Just to head on in focus, we talk with the Puerto Rican Day Parade Vice President. What you need to know about the mayor.